Hello everybody, this is Scott at International Radiant at uh, the headquarters here in Chesterfield, Michigan. In today's tech session, we are gonna talk about the uh, DX series heater, the Reverberate DX series heater made by Detroit Radiant. Uh, so there's three different versions. There's a DX series, there's a DX2 and a DX3L. They all operate uh, similar in principle. So for today's t t uh, tech session, I'm gonna actually troubleshoot the DX2 series heater and then we will show you a quick picture of the DX3 series, which is a different box configuration, uh, more easier to service and that sort of thing. But uh, for today's session, we'll do the DX2 series. Okay, so the sequence of operation uh, for this heater is if it receives 120 volts, uh, the fan will come on. And then immediately after that, uh, this compartment here would pressurize and the pressure, normally open pressure switch would then close. It sends a signal back to the circuit board and then the circuit board will then send power out to the hot surface igniter or the glow bar, which is under this lid here. And you should see that start to glow orange after about 30 seconds. And then about 25 or 30 seconds after that, it'll now send power out to the gas valve. And if the flame rod is good and the polarity is proper on the heater, the heater will continue to run until the sequence of operation is over or the call for heat is over and then it'll stay off until the next call for heat. Okay, so as far as troubleshooting techniques go, um, the, so I'm gonna put the, 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 so the lid is normally on your heater. Right? So the one unique thing about this heater is you often have to take the lid on and off as you're troubleshooting it. And do be careful because there is 120 volts in the heater, so if you're using alligator clips or you know voltmeters and that sort of thing, um, just be conscious of the heater has power or not. So the one thing that um, is also very important to note: we get a lot of calls on troubleshooting, and they want to try to diagnose, you know, is it, you know, a bad fan blower or is it a bad uh, pressure switch? So sometimes there's external variables to the heater. For example, blockage on the inlet. This is an air intake collar, and sometimes in dirtier environments you would actually have fresh air pipe hooking up to this collar. So you do want to check all the way back for bird's nest, um, dust, uh, any type of debris that might be in the intake pipe. The other side of things is the on the exchanger pipe. Now, on my desk here today is just simply the power head. But in the service, these heaters are hooked up to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet of exchanger pipe. And very often that exchanger pipe could become restricted. There could be a bird's nest in the exhaust on that. Or let's just say it's an older heater and it has sooting in the pipe and the soot would have to get cleaned out. So you could throw parts at this all day long. And if you have those external variables, you're never going to get to the bottom of your problem until you remedy those issues. So, First things first, we, we uh, power the heater, we listen for the fan. Do make sure you inspect the fan wheel, the blower, to make sure it's not gunked up because the fan could be running, but it, because it's gunked up, it might not be pushing the proper air. So first things first is to make sure the fan comes on and is clean. If the fan doesn't come on, then right there out of the gate, that's your culprit. You have to put the fan in. So fan would come on, we've verified that. And now, let's just say we are not getting glow bar. Uh, that's where kind of the sequence stops. So what we'll very often do is put alligator clips across the pressure switch. We'll put the lid back on and power the heater. And if we now get the hot surface igniter, which we didn't before, then we will focus on this pressure switch as either being the culprit or as to why it's not closing for the reasons I mentioned earlier. There could be an obstruction or what have you. Now some of the older models actually had two pressure switches. So an older model that would have the second pressure switch would be in this compartment here and that actually is a normally closed switch uh, which would in theory stay closed unless you did have an obstruction in your exhaust pipe or your radiant pipe. So if you have a model that has the two pressure switches, you could now jump the second pressure switch off if you're still not getting your glow bar and you can start over 
and try for your, for your glow bar. Um, so it's the same concept. So now, let's just say you've done that and you have no glow bar, no hot surface igniter. Uh, so there's a few things you can do. One, here's what the hot surface igniter looks like. Um, I can pop this little lid off here. One convenient feature with this model heater is it's a spring clip that actually you, you uh, just take that spring clip off, that igniter slides out, the new one will slide in, and away you go, um, new hot surface igniter. So there's one of a couple things you could do. You could take an ohm meter and check the ohm reading across these terminals here. And you, if you have between 50 and 400 ohms, chances are this is a good igniter. Sometimes if you take the igniter out, you can see a crack or a burn mark in it. And that pretty much will tell you that that could be your culprit. So let's just say that checks out. Uh, so really what you want to do now is you want to make sure you're actually getting 110 volts sent to your igniter. So if you have a bad circuit board, um, you could take your voltmeter and you could basically unplug your igniter and put your probes on that harness and see if you're actually getting 110 volts out to the igniter. If you're not getting 110 volts out to the igniter after you've jumped your pressure switches out, and all that good stuff, then that pretty much tells us right there that the circuit board could be your culprit. So let's just say you have your igniter in, is going, but you're, you're, uh, you're not getting flame. So what you do want to make sure is um, after the igniter heats up and you get to the point where your gas valve should click, you, you should be able to hear it click. But let's just say you're not. You could now take your voltmeter again and check for your voltage at your gas valve. Some models have a 110 volt valve, some models have a 24 volt valve. You would get power at your valve again after uh, probably about, um, it's, when everything's said and done, it's probably 50 to 60 seconds after your initial fan comes on. So if you're not getting 110 volts to your valve, then that tells you that probably the circuit board is bad as well. But now let's say you are getting 110 volts to the valve, but you're hearing no click, no flame, nothing's happening, then that pretty much would tell us that the valve needs to be replaced. So from there, let's just say everything's working good up till this point. We have the hot surface igniter come on, the valve clicks, we have flame, but the flame only comes on for eight seconds. This is a common troubleshoot call that we get. If it's a brand new heater, a brand new installation, the very first thing we will ask if the polarity is correct. So across your terminal on the plug, check against your ground in the common terminal. And if you're getting 120 across ground and common, then that tells you that your wires are reversed at the plug. Um, you should get 120 volts across the ground in the hot terminal of your plug. So we do get that a lot on new heaters, or every once in a while, somebody will say, yeah, they recently did some electrical changes in the building and something might've got reversed. So if that is not the problem, then the next thing we would focus on is the flame rod. And in this compartment here, um, there's a flame rod which sits right next to the glow bar and you can pull that out. Sometimes it needs to get cleaned off with a terry cloth or some, it might just be an old flame rod that's kind of partially disintegrated and the flame rod would be replaced and by then you should have, after checking all these items out, you should have a properly operating heater. If not, be sure to call us at the number listed and we'll be sure to help you out over the phone. Uh, that concludes today's tech session. Uh, again, thank you for your time.